Hey y'all, it's Crystal. Welcome, welcome back. Um, it's that time. It's time for the April TBR. March has flown by. April is right around the corner. And as per usual, I've got 971 books to talk about today. And uh, again, I got another big pile of books for my possibilities for April. But y'all know me. I like to have a lot of books to choose from and I get to what I get to. You know the drill if you've been around here. So, Let's just dive right into it. We're gonna start off, of course, with my, you know, buddy reads, book clubs, challenge stuff. And then there are a couple of events going on in April too that I'm gonna to try to take part in. So we'll dig into that at the end after all the other stuff. So let's get going. <laughs> so for Kelly over at Kelly Hooked on Books, she has her um, From Hell book club where she reads vintage horror books. The choice for April is Hell House Spy, Richard Matheson. Super excited to finally read this one. I know it's a classic and I have not read it yet. I've actually only read one thing by Matheson and that was A Stir of Echoes. Actually, I've not even read I Am Legend yet. I know. I know. Uh, but I'm going to dig into Hell House next month and I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great. So, but yeah, excited for that one it on the floor. The uh, Stephen King read-along um, pick for the month, you know, we, uh, Kelly spins us a wheel to pick us a Stephen King book every month, and we chat about these over on Brad Proctor's Discord. I mention it every time, but I'll, I'll of course link all of their information below if you want to find out more. But the wheel gave us misery for April, um, and I'm really excited for this one. Misery was the very first Stephen King book I ever read. I was about 12-ish, 13 maybe, and um, and I don't actually think I've read it since. So, so I uh, it'll be fun to see, you know, what I think about it as a grown person. Uh, but Misery is a classic story though, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty jazzed to actually read this one again. So excited for that, for the King read-alongs. I'm just enjoying making my way through all the King books, so that's been fun. All right, the book club choice for uh, Rachel of the Shades of Orange Patreon book club is The Twisted Ones by Teen Kip T. Kingfisher. And again, I'm excited about this one. I've not read this author yet. Um, I've heard good things, and this one in particular, I'm super excited about. I don't know too much about it, other than I think it's set in North Carolina, you know, which is where I live, so that's always lots of fun. <laughs> uh, for my little book club that I have with some friends of mine, um, our April pick is going to be After Dark by Haruki Murakami. Um, and I've not read anything by this author either. I know. Okay, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, but I'm hoping this one will be a good place to start for me, um, digging into his work. It's a short one, so so there's that. <laughs> um, and I don't know much about this one. Gripping novel of encounters set in Tokyo during the spooky hours between midnight and dawn, which I guess is called why, why it's called After Dark. Um, trademark Murakami's trademark humor, psychological insight, and grasp of spirit and morality are here are here distilled with an extraordinary harmonious mastery. Okay, I'm gonna check it out for sure, and I'm hoping it'll be a, a good a good uh, book club discussion book. What's next? Oh, we're gonna continue on with the Lotland series. I'm doing the group uh, read-along over um, with Steve Talks Books. He's got this uh, read-along going on uh, over on his forums. Yeah, so we're gonna dig into book two, which is The True Bastards. I love this cover. And um, so we'll see. I, I just started the first book, so. Um, Got the second one up and ready to go, so we'll see where this one goes. It's a little bit, a little bit thicker than the first one. So I see what you're doing, Mr. French. Okay. <laughs> uh, my poor, poor Malazan read along with Jason over. At <laughs> Jason's weird reads. I didn't touch this book in uh, March, so I would really like to make some progress on it in April. Um, I'm halfway. I mean, I. I'm making progress, but I would really like to get it finished, actually. <laughs> but at least just make some more progress in April. 
Um, like I said, March, I just I didn't read, I don't think, a page. So, got to keep going with this book. I'm enjoying it. I just, you know, I got really distracted and marked by other stuff. So, I really want to at least maybe get another part finished. I mean, I think that would be a good, you know, a good goal. That's, that's, that would get me to book four. Um, we'll see. Just make some progress is my ultimate goal for that one. Just to kind of keep trucking along in this series because it's so long. <laughs> um, for the BC Andrews read along that we're doing, Kelly Hooked on Books again. She's hosting this um, read along. We're still in the thick of the Doll and Ganger series. We'll be reading book four in April, which is Seeds of Yesterday. Lord, we'll just see what's going on in this one. You know what I'm saying? They just get <laughs> they just get uh, more soap opera y and soap opera y. <laughs> um, so, yeah, book four. Let's see. Um, I'm going to be doing a little buddy read um, uh, with a friend. Um, I'm going to be reading The Queen of the Cicadas by V. Castro. Super excited. It's a short one, um, but I'm super excited. I, I enjoy V. Castro's work. And um, really want to just read it all, so <laughs> so we're gonna dig into that one in April. Might reread for the month because you know I'm doing at least one reread per month, and I'm going way way back. I'm gonna dig into Survivor by Chuck Palahniuk. I've not read this since it came out, um, so that's been a long time ago. It was ninety. Was this for ninety seven? Ninety nine. So so yeah, <laughs> it's been a long time since I first read this one, and so I'm super excited to read it again. And uh, get back into this, uh, the mindset of Mr. Tinder here. Tinder Branson, who is a uh, kind of the last member of this sort of cult, uh, religious cult and religious type cult, and um, hijacks a plane and all sorts of all sorts of other things going on. So really looking forward to that. I think it'll be fun. That was gonna be fun. I remember really liking that one, so you know, that's always good. <laughs> Let's see, my pile's over here. I, uh, for my books in the freezer reading challenge, which I'm, I need to, I need to kind of, I need to kind of pick it up. I have this one on my list for that. And I forget what the prompt was, but I'm going to read Dementia by Russell Coy because it is nice and short. <laughs> and, um, it sounds, you know, pretty good. After giving up on his dream of being a published writer, Chris is plagued by a series of nightmarish, nightmarish visions of grotesque creatures. As the visions manifest with greater frequency, they start targeting his young daughter. They are finding their way into his world and only he can fight them. So, sounds like a lot to pack into this little story, but I'm down for the ride. I'm down for it. Uh, let's see, four uh, to killing kind of two birds, one stone here for my monthly middle grade pick. And for one of the like 12 for 12, you know, we had friends recommend you a book. I'm going to try to get into Snapdragon by Kat Lee. This was recommended to my, by my pal Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. And um, I don't know too much about this one other than she recommended it. And we tend to agree on a lot of middle grade stories. So, um, so I think I'll like this one too. So that'll be really fun for my short story uh, collection for the month. I'm going to dig into The Paper Menagerie by Ken Liu. Uh, let's see. This is it has short stories I think, and some novellas. So there are, I think, a few longer pieces in here. But that's fine. I'm just, you know, again, I make my way slowly through these. Read a story-ish a day, you know. And um, I just make my way through it. It's just a decent-sized collection. So... Um, it may take me the whole month, and that's fine. Um, but I'm excited. I'm, um, for again, another for first time author for me. I've not read anything by by him, so um, yeah, I'm excited to see what's what's going on in this one. It's gonna be fun. What else? Oh, the uh, Dune read along. Uh, Dan over at Book McNoggins hosting that. We're gonna. I think he's already started, but I'm gonna wait till April to dig into Dune Messiah book two. Um, first time read for me, uh, and I'm excited to see where the story goes after rereading Dune. Um, and yeah, I'm just excited. I know we pick up with Paul again, um, but I don't, I don't really know much else. I don't really need to know. I just want to read it and see what's going on. 
I'm not excited for that. The vision of the month for uh, April, and that's Juan over at Plague by Divisions, little monthly, you know, kind of read along, is Watership Down by Richard Adams. I could not find my copy. Um, I'm pretty sure I have one. Your guess is as good as mine. I'll have to dig through the shelves to find it. This will technically be a reread for me, but I've read this one several years ago, though, so I'm definitely down for a reread um, if I can fit this one in. Um, because I remember loving it. <laughs> so it'll be good. Uh, and again, if I have time, the Ladies of Horror Fiction monthly book choice is The um, the Other Black Girl by Z um, Zakia Delilah Harris. Um, I think it's more of a kind of a thrillery type story. Um, but I'll, I'll give it a go again if I can. I think I found the audiobook through my Libby app, so if I have time, uh, I'll definitely like to dig into that one too and give, give that one a try. Uh, over on, you know, Brad has a little monthly book club, Brad Proctor. We're going to dig into Razor Blade Tears in April. Very excited for this. This is by S.A. Cosby. I've heard you know, mostly good things about this one, so I'm just, yeah, I'm excited to get into it. Not terribly long, so, um, yeah, I think this is going to be a good one. Throw it on the pile. Is that it? I think that's it for all. Just my, nope, I lie, I lie. <laughs> my poetry collections. Um, I've got a couple because this one is just a really slim thing. It's called Feeding the Light by Jackie Shelton Green. Um, she's a North Carolina poet laureate. I actually found this at a thrift store, and this really just got sort of a few poems in here. So I'm gonna make my way through this, and then if, you know, if I have time, if I feel like it. I also pulled out Anne Sexton's um, love poems, um, and I'll dig my way through that, um, um, you know, as time permits. You know, again, I just read like one a day, and um, I'm just enjoying that. I'm still really enjoying that. So, poems for the month, <laughs> and I think that's all of the non-event stuff. So a couple of events that go on in April. One is the Disability Readathon, and uh, this is hosted by Aaron Hawley and Anna G. I will of course link their announcements down below. Um, really, the aim is to read books written by disabled authors. They really stress reading books by actual disabled authors, um, and. They do have prompts and, and they have all kinds of challenges and things like that, but I'm just really gonna try to get to a couple of books. Um, one being this one that I uh, had mentioned previously in my Down Syndrome uh, recommendation book. Uh, but this is My Life with Down Syndrome, More Like Than Different by David Egan. It's a slim little thing, so definitely gonna make time for this one. I think April will be perfect time to read it and check out what David has to say. I'm really excited about it wait and there is a group book for uh, the disability readathon I've had this one on my shelf for over a year now and I still haven't read it so I'm gonna try to dig into disability visibility maybe you know sort of a, a, alongside the Ken Liu book so maybe read a story from here one day and then you know switch off or something like that maybe we'll see um, but this is really stories from there it's a collection of different stories written by disabled people really kind of like what life is like as a disabled person. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know why I haven't read it yet. So just do it, Crystal. All right, so Old School April is the next event. This is, of course, written, um, it, created by Kelsey over Slime and Slashers. I just love her, you guys. Um, I'm sure you're watching her, but if you're not, I'll link her down below. All her announcement channel, her announcement video for this. She puts a lot of work into her videos, and um, check it out because she's. This is gonna be fun. It is old school focused stuff. I think she's wanting us to focus on 2002 or older, and it's a. She has a whole list of like book uh, reading prompts, and then a whole list of watch prompts. So it's not just books. Excuse me. I need to grab one. It's not just books. It's also TV shows, movies, all that kind of stuff. Anything old school, it's going to be fun. So I do have some things picked out for that. You know, if I have time, I'm going to squeeze some of these things in. 
Um, so for the reading prompts, there are ones I have things picked out for. So one is to read a Goosebumps book. I mean, that's easy. And I'm going to go with the blob that ate everyone. That sounds fun. Oh, that, <laughs> that cover's pretty great. Uh, this is from 1997. So yeah, that one definitely fits. Um, the next one is to read any 80s horror book. Um, you know, I'm already reading this one, so I'm going to plug that in for that. This is from 1980. I looked, but I've forgotten. Da -da -da. Lord. I don't know. Lord is, is old. Anyway, can't even find it on there. The next, uh, the next one is to read a Nickelodeon book or any 90s book or something that features, you know, slime, goo, evil toys, something, you know, Nickelodeon-ish. And I'm actually gonna substitute that blob for goo and slimes. I think it works pretty well. And uh, use the blob that ate everyone for that prompt. Double up on that one, because I think it works pretty good. It looks pretty slime to me. Uh, let's see, read an R and Are You Afraid of the Dark book? Or a book that fits the vibe or theme of an Are You Afraid of the Dark? I guess episode. And I don't have anything written down for this because I've never, I've not read a single, um, I've not watched a single episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Um, so I might just kind of go with Kelsey to see if anything I'm already planning to read maybe already fits. <laughs> we'll see. Um, let's see. One, two, three. Number four is to read a vintage uh, or retro book. And excuse me. I forgot I was doubling up on some of these. I, I've got Hill House already slated for that. And this is very vintage because this is from the 70s. So, um, yeah, that'll fit that one. Let's see. Uh, next is to read a Fear Street Point Horror or a Christopher B Pike book. Um, over on my Hoopla, I actually found, was it an audiobook? It's either audiobook or ebook. I can't remember now. But I found a Fear Street book for a double date. And that one sounded pretty do fun. So I can squeeze it in. I'm definitely going to give that one a go. I've only read one Fear Street book, so, um, so yeah. I'm a little too old. You know, I, I missed that a little bit by a few years because I was a little bit older when all that stuff came out. Alrighty, so next is to read any kind of 80s middle grade or YA book. It doesn't have to be horror related. And I'm actually going to read Sarah Plain and Tall by Patricia McLaughlin. Um, it's short for one, but also it's a, it's a Newberry and, um, yeah, I don't know too much about that. I feel like there's a movie or a series, Sarah Plain and Tall too. Um, but you know, it's just a, it's just a book that, I, that I've been wanting to read. If I have time for it, I'm definitely going to try to squeeze it in, in April. Uh, the next one is to read any nineties horror book. And it's something that I thought would be fun. If I, again, I hope I have time for all these books because I want to read them all, of course, is to read this one. It's called Antibodies by Kevin J. Anderson. And it's an X Files book. And I read one other X Files book, and they're a lot of fun. If you're an X Files fan, you'll like them. You know, just Scully and Mulder, right? Uh, so this one, um, uh, Mulder and Scully, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Okay, they're checking out the strange death of a dedicated cancer research scientist, his body hideously ravaged by an unrecognizable virus. Certainly seems to apply to the cases that they check out. All right, the discovery of a second corpse savagely mutilated from within suggests that the researcher's humanitarian work could have had horrific unintended consequences. I don't wanna know. <laughs> it sounds like so much fun. Um, it was from the 90s, let me double check. Yeah, 1997, I guess. Let's see, first paperback printing. Okay, yeah, hard print, 1997, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think this would be fun. And it really pulls into that old school because man, I was a big X-Files fan back in the 90s. Faux show, I loved the X-Files, and I still love the X-Files, but oh, love it. Okay, and then what do we got? What do we got next? 
uh, is to read any 90s middle grade or YA book. Again, it doesn't have to be horror, and I've actually pulled out The V from Saturday by E.L. Cunningsburg. This one was from 1996, and again, it's a Newberry, so I'm trying to to get some of my Newberry books and um, I don't know much about it but um, if I get time I'm gonna try to squeeze it in like I said so that's my old school April picks again she's got a big watch you know watch uh, props as well like you know an 80s horror movie watch a Goosebumps episode uh, 90s Nickelodeon stuff are you free of the dark um, Disney Channel stuff 80s family movies, 90s horror movie, and I haven't selected any things for those yet, but I'm really going to try to because it just sounds like so much fun, but I'm probably just going to pick things as I as I go and not really plan, plan it out, you know, uh, so I can report back later, you know, what I, <laughs> what I ended up watching for the month, uh, check out some of this old school stuff, especially like, you know, Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark, I didn't watch any of that stuff, so it'll all be new to me. Uh, so I think I think that's it. All my million and one books I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna read. We'll see what we get to. You know, it's just a possibility pile. I don't stress over it too much. Uh, but anyway, have you read any of these books? Let me know. Or are you doing any of these readathons? Or let me know. It sounds like it's gonna be a fun month for sure. And uh, yeah, thanks as always for watching. I'm always so appreciative of your time. And that's gonna do it for me. Bye.